We all know that the grand opening of Gigafactory Texas is coming up in April, and I was lucky enough to go to Austin a few weeks ago and see Gigafactory, at least from the outside, in person. Elon Musk says Tesla plans to invest more than $10 billion in its Gigafactory in Texas and will employ 20,000 workers. But where are all of those workers going to live? If you haven't noticed, there's kind of a housing crisis around the country right now, and it's especially prominent in a city like Austin. I rode around for the day with Matt Holm. He is a top real estate agent in the area, and he says he's kind of worried for these Tesla employees. I'm, I'm scared for people that are going to be moving here, working in any capacity, but people coming for Tesla, SpaceX, whatever else is coming. You've also got Google, Apple, Amazon. We built 40,000 homes last year in Austin, but 65,000 people moved here. Whoa. My projections are 100,000 people move here this year. Maybe we get to 45,000 homes. And the problem is most of the new construction is out in the periphery, 45 minutes to an hour out. Yeah. So if you want to get something central, it's existing inventory. Example, I've got folks looking in Westlake, just west of town. And right now, out of the 11,000 homes that are there that run eight miles from downtown going west, there's 17 on the market. And that is it. <laughs> I mean, we can't even get over 20 homes. So what's the solution? New community. You're actually about to go see it. I mean, what what you need is factory built homes that can come off the assembly line at full capacity. Maybe we do, you know, a hundred, a thousand, but we can get to ten thousand, fifty thousand homes a month, and they're they're agnostic. They can be placed anywhere. For new community, we have over three thousand acres in Austin, so we have the capacity in Austin to create these developments. But really, the the goal is to solve housing for the planet, and that's really sounds like a crazy ambition, but yeah. that's that's really the goal. You'll see when you get there what we're looking at, but. We can't build sticks and bricks housing fast enough in this city. Sure. That's why he's working on a project called New Community, and it will hopefully offer a solution to this very real problem. So this is an example of the New Community Starter Studio. It is four modules, and each module is 80 square feet. And let's take a look around the corner here just so that you can see kind of what it looks like from the outside. New Community is working on establishing three communities, New Mountain and New Lake Travis in Travis County and New Forest in Bastrop County. And a lot of people that are coming to work at Tesla's Gigafactory are already interested in this new community. So the whole concept of this is like, you don't need to buy a 5,000 square foot home. And right. like for because there's a lot of people that don't need that. And so this is skyscraper glass. It's double paned and it gives you that feeling of luxury and it's open, but it's also affordable. When you think of a modular home, you may think that it's inferior to a traditionally built or site built home. Oftentimes it's because a lot of people confuse modular homes with mobile homes. It's true, while modular homes aren't usually as costly as traditionally built homes, they aren't mobile homes either. These modular homes sit on a foundation and they're constructed in factories and then brought to the home sites. And they're even better than modular homes of the past. Many manufacturers now use 3D printing and robotics to build them. And when you think of modular homes, you probably don't think about one with a Doge doghouse or with Cybertruck in mind. So what is this? Oh, that's going on there. Dogecoin doghouse. What? Yeah. So you. The hell's can, that? <laughs> it's essentially, yeah. So it's like it's a it's a doghouse where you can put in like an FSD card and the dog can come in and out of the home. Oh my God. And we can put, you can put like whatever you want, but we, for this example, we use the Dogecoin symbol. Of course. Yeah. There's never been a full developed community with this kind of product on the ground. The, okay. Austin would be the, the first one. This community is especially geared toward Tesla employees and all of the other high tech employees that are coming flooding into the city of Austin. The city has a really antiquated development code that's like this thick. Mm -hmm. So you, it, you're in, to give you an idea, if you're gonna go um, submit your plans and build in Dallas or Houston, you're less than a week. The average right now is over six months here. Just Whoa. to submit your plans and for them to go, yep, we're done with our comments, you can start building. That's insane, yeah, right? They is. have to streamline that, especially 
when we're getting this many people moving here. And so I'm, I'm in fear of fast forward two or three years, I don't know where these people are even going to lay their head at night, either to rent or own, just based on the sheer volume that's coming here. So it's, it's an interesting time to be here. And people think, oh, you know, you're going to do so well, it's great, you know, good for you, blah, blah, blah. But realistically, I'm, I'm scared. Wow, okay. What the hell? <laughs> Please don't hit me. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right. Gonna get, get, gonna get my car wrecked here at Tesla. Yeah. Good thing I can get a new one right there. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So housing is housing is going to be challenging. I think the interesting thing is kind of parallel to what Elon and Tesla did uh, in the car space, right? When they started making EVs, even me, like eight, ten years ago, when I heard about Tesla making electric cars, I was like, oh, Elon's making golf carts on wheels. Yeah. We didn't understand that concept. So housing is going through that same revolution mm -hmm. right now. I call it housing 2.0. Right. What is the future of housing? Clearly what we're doing today doesn't make sense. It's yeah. not sustainable. Yep. So the future, this vision of the next generation of housing, I think 100% has to do with manufactured homes, prefabrication. That's because you, you need that volume. Factory built homes Factory that can built, go off yep. the assembly line in the final assembly. Like what you're about to go see, assembled in less than a day. Wow. So that you had a house brought together. So it comes oh from the God. factory, you drop it off, clip, 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 house. That's why Matt and Anwar Beck are so excited about new community. They really believe that these new communities could be implemented all across the country and could really provide a great solution. Now, if you go inside, everything is built uh, very efficiently. So again, this is the smallest unit. Um, everything is designed very compact, but as you start getting into the larger models or you can start changing the colors, everything's customizable. So this like is it. like white, it's very modern. Um, all the shades are motorized. So with a click of, click of a button, you can, oh, can drop down that? shades. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I want to walk around naked. So what do I do? So okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> all the... Uh, the electrical is all like it's quick connect so you don't have to have like a licensed electrician like run all the wiring and everything everything is built like on, in a factory it's okay. not like built on site like a stick built construction right, home. right. so it's almost like building a car so right. it's in a factory you're it's made more and more efficient and it's definitely the future of housing so this is that really popular unit I was telling mm. you about so this is like uh, like an atrium so it's like open top um, 10 modules, say so 800 square feet. And then this one is 17 modules. Holy crap. So it just keeps getting bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. No, and that looks can, great. You can enlarge it more if you wanted to. Here's your flamethrower. No. <laughs> I wish. So another important point to make is that New Community prides itself on being eco-friendly. So each home is built into nature instead of tearing it down. And each home has fully integrated solar powered energy systems and energy efficient materials. And this trend isn't going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, last year, wind and solar energy grew at the fastest rate in US history. And now it accounts for at least 13% of the nation's power generation. So I was curious to learn more about solar energy and hey, you can too with this course on Brilliant. You can learn the physics of energy harvesting from our most renewable source, which is of course the sun. In the course, you'll learn the principal methods of harvesting energy from sunlight through concentrated solar power and photovoltaic cells. Now, one of the best things about Brilliant is you learn interactively. And in fact, that is one of the best ways to learn how to do anything. Brilliant has fun hands-on lessons in math, science, maybe you're interested in computer science even. And this probably comes as no surprise, but when you learn interactively, you actually learn six times more effectively than if you were just sitting through a lecture. So why don't you join the millions already learning on Brilliant right now? And I have a special offer for you. Head to brilliant.org slash alienspace to get started for free. So once you get started taking these interactive lessons, the first 200 of you will get a special 20% off of an annual membership by going through my link. So once again, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let's get back into the new community homes. So the nice thing is if this is not your aesthetic, there are plenty of different options for you for your exterior walls. You got metal options, you got composite slat options. The partner that helped engineer and design the, the actual structure itself, they typically build high rises. So <laughs> they do a lot of curtain walled systems. 
So think of what we're doing is you take a high rise, put it on its side and spread it all out. Yeah, so what would this one go for? The way ownership is, works is a little bit different with us. Mm -hmm. You own it through a share. So it's a percentage equity in the whole of the community. Hmm. So if you were to buy this outright to give you an idea with the land and the home, as just a like a point of reference, it'd be like 160 to 170,000. Mm -hmm. And it would go up from there. He says they plan to introduce solar and possibly wind energy in these communities. They're also really focused on prioritizing electric vehicles. So like the way they're transported is actually through this. So if you see this on each corner um, of the module, it would screw into there and we could pick it up with a forklift. Whoa. Yeah, if you, you want to feel it. It's heavy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so there's, gotcha, yeah. wow. Yeah, so that, that anchors down. And then same, same idea with the foundation. So whatever, I mean, it's gonna depend what we do um, or which property it is. Like, as you know, some parts of Austin, there's a lot of rock, a lot of limestone. Mm -hmm. Like the lake property, we're gonna do the peered system. Other properties may do, we may have to do slab, we may have to do, whatever, but we're really trying to work on different types of foundation. Here's some different examples of the interior flooring. So there's different woods that you can get. Here's some interior wall covering as well. So what kind of wallpaper do you want? They even have carbon fiber mat. That's really cool. What's over here? There's some interior wall covering. You can do cement. Here's a nice little rendering of an example you can have wood slats and wow there's plenty of options and my favorite section this is the interior for the bathroom if i had to do it i think i'd go with these i want one of these <laughs> i know y'all wanted to see the bathroom come on in <laughs> this is the bathroom so here is your lovely shower. Look at this thing. It's kind of crazy looking. Um, and then you have your sink and your toilet. Do not use it. And this bathroom actually could be bigger if the HVAC system was moved and there is a, an option to do that. So this bathroom could be bigger, but even as it is, I think it's actually bigger than the bathroom in my apartment. So. That's sad. That's all that is. Welcome to my kitchen here, Alien Space Kitchen. You want some cereal? This is a slide out pantry, sliding pantry. It's pretty cool. So everything here is uh, designed really efficiently. Like this, for example, is a vent for when you cook. Because cooking is good for the soul. So this is where the fridge would be. This is where the freezer would be. So these two uh, openings right here, all of these open up um, for whatever you need. So this size unit is really for like a single person, but Correct. you can stack them or connect them so you can have a family. Yes. So how, how many units would be good for a family, do you think? So we have our most popular model is actually called, uh, it's an M10. So what it is, it's 10 modules, so it's 800 square feet. Oh, wow. And it has uh, extra space in the middle where it's like an atrium, like open space in the middle. Um, that one you can convert from anywhere from one bedroom to two bedrooms, and then there's a bigger plan from there. Also, you have an option to have your module furnished. So it would come with something like this. You could either have like Ikea furniture or like that fine Italian furniture. So pick your poison. And take a look at this rendering of their lake community. You can see a beautiful amphitheater. That's where they envision there will be music. And then if you look here, so all of these homes are elevated. They're put on piers. Mm -hmm. And no matter where you are on the property, you'll have some sort of lake view. Ah. Uh, and then- Giorgio Baruso. Baruso. So he's the architect. Giorgio Baruso. The forest slots that we have are designed to be more like nestled in the natural environment. And you'll see those being anywhere from 320 square feet, maybe like double the size. 
So why is it called NEW? What does NEW stand for? New Eco Sustainable Urban Communities. Ooh, okay. So this is like our Texas garage version. Um, Do I see a Cybertruck? Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so we would have like charging stations. Um, we have like, there's kind of two ways the parking works. One is there's like an alleyway here where you can pull in. There's more traditional lots with like a fence line. You can pull in. This is a like uh, a foldable cover for the garage, or you could have something like this, which is a detached garage. Mm. Or okay. you have lots like these, um, where it's like the ones that are more nestled in the natural environment. Mm -hmm. Those ones um, are the the ones that are a little bit smaller, and you can't access with a car, but they'll be nearby parking. So it'll be nearby solar covered parking. I come from a background of normal uh, real estate development and home building. So right now it was taking us, and I'm still currently building homes. So right now it took us about a year and two months to build one single family home, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Materials, um, labor shortage. Right. Um, basic economics of what's going on mm -hmm. in the market. Mm -hmm. With this, we can make it a lot more efficient. We can actually use advanced techniques for manufacturing, like on a line, everything is a lot more controlled. You're not delayed by weather. Like in Reno, if it snows, you can't do anything. If right. it's windy, we can't put trusses up. Right. So labor and like being able to keep going, make, this makes it a lot more efficient, which has to change. Mm -hmm. um, so timing, being able to, I mean, like I was saying is, we, we could build one of these when, uh, when everything's going, it would probably take about four people, five or six days to build uh, four modules like this compared to a Over stick a home, which yeah. it takes freaking forever. Originally, our supply chains were out of Europe because of our partner. Mm -hmm. We've moved all of our supply chains to the United States. Okay. So we're looking at like the aluminum extrusions as like a company we're partnered with for in out of Dallas to bring in the materials. Mm -hmm. okay. um, a lot of different parts of this unit will be in the US. There are some things that may come from Europe, but it's mainly US based for sure. What has the response been like of people who see this and you know people who are putting in reservations? Like what are their initial reactions? A lot of people love it. Like it's it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like some people are like, this isn't a normal home. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah. And then there's some people are like, this is everything that I've been looking for. There's nothing like this out there. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so the people that are open, open-minded, looking for something different, looking for more of that bigger community mm -hmm. aspect, mm -hmm. like where you can interact with people, you can go to like nearby coffee shops, kind of get the city experience without being cluttered up in the city. Yeah. Um, those are the people that want to live in here. Mm -hmm. Do you guys already have pre-orders or who's coming here to see the showroom? We're kind of using the the Cybertruck model where people can like put in a hundred dollars. Okay. They reserve a spot in line. And then as we start rolling lots out or different, um, different communities out, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to go in and based on the order that you reserved, we'll be like, hey, this one's available. Do you want to go forward? Five years from now, what do you think it'll look like? I mean, <laughs> the goal yeah. would probably be international. Okay. So multiple states, right. multiple countries. When do you think those communities will, will open? Um, this year, next year? We're shooting for later this year. Okay. We could have delayed, like anything, there could be delays, but that we're shooting for later this year. I feel like a lot of people are familiar with the term boxable. So why, like, how does that stack up or why I is mean, that listen, different? I mean, listen, you need something for everything in any space, right? Right. But when people think modular and they think boxable, they think mobile homes, a heavy wind's going to blow that thing around. This is, I mean, if you look at the materials they're making it from, they're not, they're not exactly revolutionary and they're not really, um, they're not robust. Mm. And so what we're constructing out of um, is steel, aluminum, and skyscraper glass. So you're talking about something that is solid that really is going to outlast any of the stick frame houses that exist currently in Austin. These will last a thousand years, right? And there's nothing to deteriorate like you do on having a traditional house. To me, I would put housing 2.0 
uh, in three different like lanes. One is the modularity, which is new community, what we're doing, right? Like Lego pieces, you put them together. Another one, actually a company based out of Austin, Icon, is doing 3D printed housing. Yep. It's basically like this machine poops out cement <laughs> and makes you know the frame <laughs> of the house. But the issue with that is, besides the, the ground floor, everything else is the same stick build. Well, okay? and, it's, and it's built out of concrete. Concrete is expensive. Yep. You need to change that material. Also, mm. if you want to move a plug, how do you do that after you've poured that thing? Yep. Chip through the concrete and then patch it up? Or I mean... I, it's there's space for everybody i just don't know how that one's as scalable and how it's going to be affordable and then the third lane is the one that you mentioned boxable right mm -hmm. there that, that concept is different than what we're doing but it's kind of like you build a house in a factory but you build it in such a way that it collapses so you can ship it and then you unfold it kind of like a moving box i, I basically like joke with people with a cyber truck of houses i mean our the homes the new community homes are indestructible almost and the global modular home market is projected to grow from about 83 billion in 2020 to 109 billion by 2025. So I wanna know from you in the comments, do you think that implementing more modular homes like these are a great solution to the housing crisis that so many of us are finding ourselves in? Obviously between supply chain issues, labor shortage issues, and just the time in general that it takes to make a traditionally built home, this could be a great solution. And it's something that I really think that we could see more of in the future. And just a heads up, I plan to go back to Austin. I'm so excited. I will be there the week of GigaFest. We hope that I can get in. I'll do my best, but I do for sure plan on attending TeslaCon. And yes, of course, I'm renting a Tesla for the event. So I'm really, really excited to go back there and get some coverage of this amazing event as much as I can. I hope that you guys all enjoy it. Thank you for supporting Ellie in space. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. <laughs> all right, dude, I gotta do my job.